G'day, everyone, and welcome to the Inside NBA Show. I am your host, Matty G, on this, which is the Chase Down. This is your weekly dose of NBA fantasy basketball action to get you primed to win your week 19 or whatever other week it's been previously, obviously, one through 18. But this is the time of the season. We need to make those moves super quickly. Who should you be on to? Who are we looking to bring into our lineups? Well, we're going to break it on down after this to help you win your week. Welcome to the Ultimate Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Look, there's a whole bunch of injuries in the NBA, and I preface this whole podcast by a lot of our streaming value come week 19, week 20, 21, 22, all the way up to the very end, comes from the guys who are out. Who are going to get minutes last minute? Who is tanking? It is the cusp of silly season in fantasy action. And you, does everyone remember when Bassey from the Spurs last year was there? Wave away here. Maybe we go back to Carl Landry years ago playing right. You never know who's just going to rise and shine, like Tara Eason. Well, we loved him in the preseason, and then he gets a run at the end of last year. Oh, he's finally living up to expectations. Well, injury news after him in the last 24 hours. He is now out from the season apart from being a game time decision or doubtful for the past two or three weeks now, he is now out for the rest of the way in the year. So we do have a little bit of an injury update. So let's rip this one away. Yeah, and this one's brought to you by our good friends, the Standard Squeeze, because we all know we want to squeeze a good win out at the end of every fantasy week. Make sure you get all your gear. I've got one of their hats on right now. They're foreign ones. They're coolers. They're campers. I'm going camping over the Easter weekend. Should put some whiskey in the top of that, mix it with some with some ginger ale down below, and it bobs your ankle, and that's how I will get through my time with the in-laws. I didn't I, I said that just... Not going to tell my wife one that one, but make sure you use promo code INSIDE15 to get 15% off all your orders. Look, big news across all of the NBA with our injury outs. The first one I want to say, as I said, Tara Eason is now shut down for the rest of the season. And we all know that Cam Whitmore had a bit of a game today. So let's look for Cam Whitmore, a little bit of action there. Carl Anthony Towns is out for the T-Wolves first game uh, for personal reasons. We know that coming back from injury is Jalen Brunson. He is a game time decision for his knee. Uh, D'Anthony Melton has had his absence lengthened again. We may not see him back until the end of March. So what was once a great premise for the entire season has now dwindled. And also, bigger names in this. I should say this. Where's a big Where's a big horse name where I want one? I, I should probably play the big horse one. One of the biggest horses, obviously, in fantasy this year was our number one pick, Victor Wembanyama. Now, Victor has been, and also, hats off. A little bit of a cheeky doff. Oh, that's horrible. Let's not look at that too much. Hot hair. It's a vibe. Uh, let's give a credit where credit is due to the San Antonio Spurs uh, staff for saying more than 24 hours in advance that Victor was not going to play on Thursday. And I think that's a really good shout by them because often we go, who are we going to bring in? Who are we going to bring out? Well, the main benefactor here is obviously going to be Zach Collins with Victor Wembanyama going out. But we at least have the word on that one. We do have a bit more of an update, though, on some injuries to our Utah Jazz guys, including Walker Kessler and Keontae George. They are both listed as game time decisions from them, talking about young guys in the NBA. And Benedict Matherin is probably out another young guy for the paces until the end. So what value are we looking to bring in there for the for the paces, well, it's either Naismith or Namhard or Toppin continues to shine there. Whereas with the Cavaliers, Donovan Mitchell is out until at least the weekend. Now, it is the beginning of a back-to-back -back set on Sunday and Monday for them. So in the back of the end of your week 19, if you're a Donovan Mitchell older uh, owner, holder, of course you're holding him, but you already own him to be able to hold him. That seems superfluous. But if you already own Donovan Mitchell, obviously you are holding him, and they'll probably hold him out on the Sunday, looking forward to give him more action to kick off your week 20. Uh, Maxi Struess is a good time, uh, is a good game time decision, whereas as well, Evan Mobley, we have had word that he is looking at an absence of at least another two weeks before re-evaluation. Uh, Cody Martin for the Charlotte Hornets is still out. So is Mark Williams, Seth Curry, and LaMelo Ball. Uh, Jalen Brown is a game time decision for the Boston Celtics. And with three more games on the docket, we know that Cam Johnson 
the Brooklyn Nets is going to be ruled out for the first one. He's probably going to be ruled out for the Thursday game and then make his way back for the back-to-back set over the course of the weekend or at least play in one of those two, whereas one of the young guns of the night, his name is Jalen Johnson. Hasn't he been absolutely blistering and scintillating form for the Atlanta Hawks? Well, he has a bit of an ankle sprain. And also on, on that, LeBron James at the end. Now, he's going to be a game-time decision. He left that game. Look, the Lakers, I don't know what defense was played there today. Both of these teams put up a huge total. The Lakers' defense has been pretty bloody good lately. So to let the Sacramento Kings, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. A little bit of a dubious one. Could we be looking at a brief pause for LeBron, making sure that they they know that they're going to be in the play-in? Look, if they got this bump today, they were looking at putting a few games together about getting maybe that sixth seed. Like I went through the table before and I was like, what well, if they had won this today? It completely shifts the Western Conference a little bit. Now, yes, they have played more games than some, which is also why the wins for the Lakers mean more. And talking about this one, streaming legend today, Rui Hachimura. Well, again, we will talk about that Lakers and Kings game, but they are now at 34 wins on 33. Now, the thing is this, the Lakers have played 64 games. Now, if you look at the next best team to that one, above that one, it's the Golden State Warriors. Now, they have played three less. Above that, on two less is the Dallas Mavericks. And above that now, who has played three less is the Sacramento Kings. So all the teams who are just above the Lakers in the standings in the play-on scenario have played less games than them. They have to make up those games. Now, if they win those three, they automatically catapult higher in the Western Conference standings. And in fact, they could leapfrog over the Suns, who are 36 and 26, or the Pelicans on 37 and 25. They've also played less games. So the wins start to really matter for the Lakers really soon. Are they going to be okay just being in the play and knowing they have to roll through whoever they have to roll through again? Anthony Davis said something in a pregame conference the other day that was like, uh, we know we did it last year. We've got nothing to prove. And he just said it no, like so nonchalantly that it was almost as if the Lakers would be like, eh, fuck it. We'll get him. And that makes me bring into question this LeBron leaving late today and he's still not feeling well. He's literally come out and said that some days it's good, some days it's bad versus OKC. He was fine. But in this one, he just knew he didn't have it. He went to the locker room to be checked out. I don't know, man. I'm just a little bit dubious about what we can say with LeBron because he has been huge and his line today as well. Absolutely massive. Look, I think we are talking about that one. I'll start with the game recap. Let's go over. Let's go over the rewind and really dig uh, dig a little deeper into this one. For the- yeah, game recap. I'm going to start with the last game. I'm going to start with the last game because I want there's one guy I want to touch on with our waiver wire target who I want to get into. But the Kings got the victory. They put the Lakers on ice in the second quarter today. The Lakers had an amazing first quarter, and where they have not been great all season long is the first. They were up by nine at the end of the first quarter. Good showing, 37 to 28. But the Kings, a 44 to 20 point second quarter. The Lakers won the third and the fourth, but a 24 point drubbing, that put them up by 16 at the half. De'Aaron Fox electric today, 44 points, massive line. I said weeks ago it was a buy low window on Derek Fo- uh, on De- De'Aaron Fox, and he's proved me right since then. Apart from the timeout with injuries, he really has come around. But we can't overlook the greatness that it is LeBron James. 10 from 16 from the floor today, perfect from the free throw line. 10 from 10, high volume from LeBron, which is rare. 13 assists, five rebounds. Look, an absolutely massive game for him, and by far the best Laker, apart from Rui Hachimura with 29 points. And the thing with that was only three of them were from deep, and he didn't take a free throw. He actually got inside, 10 buckets coming within the restricted area or the paint or inside the arc, 10 shots for Rui that aren't just spot-ups from the corner is a lot of aggression out of him. And we really like to see this for him. Uh, What we like is the two steals. What we don't like is the two rebounds. We want some more there. But when obviously AD is banging it on for 11 rebounds, 14 points, not his best showing today. He could have played a lot better. Of course, obviously, since one Mr. DeMontis Simone has put up yet another 20-rebound triple-double this season. Big, big numbers for him. 
And again, not much else had to work from here apart from the revenge game from streaming sensation, as he can sometimes see. I always think he loves to show up against LeBron. I really do think that after he was a Laker for a short time, then he went back to his Kentucky boy in Indiana. And like, this has been a guy who, who's always played well against the Lakers. I almost just feel like looking at my waiver wire when Malik Monk is going against Lakers to be like, oh, there's an ad. Straight away, really aggressive from him. 19 shots today, 10 from 19, 3 from 3 from the free throw line, 8 assists, 2 steals, 5 rebounds, 26 points, plus 19, a team high for the Aaron Fox, an absolutely scintillating one. We can't take anything else away from there apart from, again, Kevin Hoiter in his 13 minutes as a starter sucked, and he will get out there, and then guys obviously around him will get hot in the lineup like Malik Monk, and they will rule him out there. We had a big win today for the Oklahoma City Thunder, bouncing back after their loss to the Lakers the other day. Shea Gildas-Alexander continues to be absolutely phenomenal. 37 points from him. And the Thunder are playing well. Great game again from Jalen Williams. He has hit his form as well. Josh Giddy today, a great Giddy name game. 19 points, 7 assists, 6 rebounds, and a steal. 32 minutes. Now, that's really important because he was playing down this is up. This is prime Giddy minutes. And this is really interesting as well because Giddy's minutes were down, but Shea at 36, Jalen at 32, Shed at 33, and Josh at 32 minutes. That's a really good show of faith in your starting unit to get the job done against a, one would say, a middling team that is bound for, for I guess we could say it's ripe for the end of season fantasy picking in a way is the Portland Trailblazers. One of those guys obviously being Duop Reith today, 16 points, five rebounds, one assist, one steal, no blocks from Duop Reith. Five from 12, not great, but good to see him hit the free throw line and hit six of seven from there today. Jeremy Grant ended up playing today. He was a game time decision. With his injury, he returned for 20 and they made it compatible. Jabari Walker obviously always suffers. He was an early favorite stream with the, oh, we're not sure if they're going to play their guys. Look, I think they will. And I think Aiton may pop back into lineups soon enough when his hand injury is done. Look, they're not, they're not going anywhere fast. They're 17 and 44 for the year. But I think they're still going to play for the fans. And look, if you have a look at the line, where are they going? The Spurs at 13 wins. Great. And then the next two under them are Detroit and Washington who were just on parity for nine wins each for the season. And then it's the Hornets on 15. So that the, the top, the bottom four are kind of set. Portland's now in like, Jesus, we're going to fucking lose like a lot. And Charlotte, they've won a bunch. Maybe they can get one of those bottom balls in the bottom four, the trailblazers, but they need to really make up their mind super quick because they're not going to do it if they keep on bringing back their players and rolling them out. Uh, Chris Murray, again, a serviceable stream, only one from one from downtown today, but again, 12 points, 23 minutes. We keep our eyes on there and see what's happening. But when you're playing Jeremy Grant, 40 minutes, and Anthony Simons, 40 minutes, and you are quote unquote tanking, uh, that bodes well for fantasy value. So let's just continue to monitor that situation as well. We know Kamara is being imitated, but he's been out injured. We just we just watch those fringy guys today. Uh, a massive Kick down victory. The the Selly, the the Steph Selly today, the, the golf driving range is pure Steph. It's just pure Steph. And he was in fine form. 29 points, six from 10 from deep today. Uh pods off the be- uh, off the bench into the starting lineups here. We love that. Uh again, Clay Thompson in his bench minutes, doing God's work. 10 points, four assists, two rebounds leading that second unit. And it's really good to see him working with Chris Paul as well. Chris Paul's stat lines have been amazing. The steals is he is just getting it in absolutely clusters. We know this is what he could do. So in 20 minutes tonight, nine assists, two rebounds, three steals, two from five from deep, Tiki six points. This is, there is no, there is no greater Chris Paul line in recent years than this kind of thing. This is, this is pretty much the go-to for this one. And it was well and truly over. Uh, they played it out. The, the Golden State Warriors even had a sucky third quarter where they scored 15 points, but it was well and truly. Even Thanasis, Thanasis Antetokounmpo played minutes today. He played three minutes. That's how bad this blowout was. A 35-point drubbing. Uh, the second best shooter in the NBA shows why that when you think that he is the second best shooter in the NBA on percentage, 
you go, huh? Like every single time I've said it to someone, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Malik Beasley is the is like the second best shooter in the NBA. The and they're like, fuck was Pitt? I'm like, no, he is. He, statistically, he is until last week the second best three point shooter behind Grayson Allen. Yes, we are in the upside down. This is exactly what every Stranger Things episode had led you to believe. And Malik Beasley today, zero from six, two from 10. This is prime Malik Beasley. This is why when you hear that, you're like, huh? Maybe I should, maybe I should add Malik Beasley, get me some cheeky threes. And you think, yeah, yeah, he's good for one or two a game. And then he does one like this. Whereas conversely today, seven from 16 from the field was Damian Lillard. Good game from him. Only the one rebound, six assists, steal, and a block there on his resume. But the five from 10 from deep was great. Uh, look, just not a good, not a good Bucks game. They didn't have it figured out. And Jay Crowder has continued to actually suck the balls out of it. The only bench guy here, and he's not even available in leagues anymore. And I'm just thinking next year, if he's, if Bobby Port, I, I'm starting to look at next year early. And like, just who do I want next year? But who do I want outside the top 100? Like, who are my top five guys outside the top 100? Like 100 to 110, 110 to 120, 120 to 130. I think Bobby Portis is going to make my list. Like, he just keeps on doing this year in, year out. He, he, he can hit threes. He can hit his free throws. His field goal percentage for a quote-unquote small line big, like, might do your head in sometimes. But again, 20 points, yeah, but 24 minutes. This is what he's done all season long. So I think this is Bobby Portis, like, just putting my mental thing when I see him in, like, the 11th round there on my on – my, I'm like, oh, that's safe. I'll just take Bobby Portis, knowing that I can drop him at any point in time and come back onto it. So love that from the, uh, the Warriors today, getting on track. And again, continuing to fight for this position – in the playing tournament. And they are a frisky team. We don't want to mess with that. I'm going to skip over a game and go to the Clippers and the Rockets. This was absolutely huge. It came down to it. The Clippers put the hurt on the Rockets. They must have been feeling all good things about this one because the, the Rockets were looking really good until the fourth quarter. And a surging Clippers led by Kawhi Leonard. Big line for him today. today. Mason Plumley getting absolutely huge minutes and also proving again that he does not how to hit a free throw 11 rebounds today uh three block shots eight points off the bench and daniel tice the center by committee with these guys zubac obviously going down and out at 15 minutes today uh doing zubac things the two blocks in 15 for him were absolutely huge and again who do we want to be the leader in this team do we want it to be Kawhi? do we want it to be paul george do we want it to be james harden well by committee it's whoever it needs to be in this game and the three of them Played an absolute blinder down the stretch today. Not to be disparaged, the Rockets played great basketball. Jabari Smith Jr., though, walking away from, he's been averaging, I believe, eight rebounds on the season. He's been averaging almost 10 the last two weeks. For him to walk away with two rebounds and to see that no starter had double-digit rebounds, this is, the, this is the great thing about the Clippers. Seven rebounds for Paul George, six rebounds for Kawhi, five for Zubach, five for Harden, two for Mann, one for Tice, the 11 from Plumlee. He was a monster. Now, Shen Goon had another absolute corker today. He was 10 from 19, 19 rebounds, 14 assists, two steals. That early season form is come back in for 23 points. And that's okay, but help out on the glass. Two rebounds. Dylan Brooks got the same. Jalen Green got more rebounds than you, Jabari. This is where Jabari's value can come from. Four from six was deep. Three from four from the line is great. The two block shots is great. But what Jabari Smith Jr. needs to do to go up to that level that we want for him, where we draft him, is that consistent eight rebounds a game. Six, eight rebounds a game, uh, two assists, a block, two threes, 20 points, sexy, sexy start line. He's continued to grow this year, and I love that one. Cam Whitmore, as I said, he continues to be a really good stream option, and especially with it being announced that Tara Eason is out for the season, 24 minutes for him, and Aman Thompson, Amen Thompson, 18 minutes from him today. We can continue to stream value off of these two guys. And no one else we can continue really even in the wake of the Russell Westbrook injuries to give minutes to this way here. In the rest of the game today, we had the Memphis Grizzlies getting a win over the sliding uh, over the sliding 76ers. A great Paul Reed game was the major draw. This, this guy has been picked up and dropped, picked up and dropped. And then today, he... Plays 24 minutes, eight from 17, 11 rebounds, three assists, one steal, three blocks. 
God help me if Paul Reed could do this all the time. He'd just be so attractive. And Paul Reed continues to be available in some leagues. People have picked him up, put him back all the time because he has been, one would say, for lack of a better term, a disappointment. And they had that beautiful back-to-back set and maybe we wanted to have big Paul Reed there. But yeah, people have been dropping him. And again, we look at him, he's gone up 2% rostered. He's 52% rostered in the last day on the back of the back-to-back sets. So this is a guy who the next time the 76ers have a back-to-back set, we're, we're looking to bring him into our lineups because he is available. He's available basically in half of the Yahoo leagues. And now that he's played his two back-to-back games, you can best believe if you look at Yahoo tomorrow or the day after, he'll be dropped and down two, three, four percent as someone wants to jump on to the next guy they can get to get these wins in week 19. That's what it's coming down to. Uh, a disappointing game again for Tobias Harris, three from 12. He has done this lately. He's been inconsistent as campaign uh, off the oh, into the point starting point guard role. He is playing. Okay, Tyrese Maxi out today. We like that. So when Maxi is still out, we can definitely bring in campaign uh, across the board here. Buddy Hill, three steals, three assists, five rebounds, three from seven from D, 15 points. He is a continued watch guy, whereas Kelly Oubre Jr. was the one who blew this absolutely wide open, 25 points today, but seven from 21. Kelly Oubre has never met a shot he did not like. And neither has Gigi Jackson today, 10 shots today. And Gigi in 22 minutes took those 10 shots as well. Again, continues to be the most frustrating person. Vince Williams, a bounce back game for Vincey Williams Jr. here. But it's Jaron Jackson Jr. rolling out for 37 point, 37 minutes for 30 points, eight from 10 from the free throw line, uh, six block shots. May I add? Huge numbers from Triple J. And we all wondered, what's he going to do? Is he going to play? Is he not going to play? And I said, I think they're going to roll out Triple J down the way. There's no other way to get around it. They're going to play him for the fans, if more than anything else. So I really do like Triple J the way. And it's too late for trading for him in leagues. And, and it's done now. It's, it's bye-bye. It's done. Just like your ability to get like six man of the year, Bogdan Bogdanovic. Mate, he has been an absolute corker. And he's made his way into the starting lineup today. A 34 minutes, 23 points. Sadiq Bay continuing to do his things. He also got 23 points, but a really complete line from Bogdan Bogdanovic. We continue to look at the bench of the Hawks for some occasional streaming value. Today, it was Bruno Fernando again with Okuneka Okongwu is out. Okuneka is going to be re-evaluated next week, so we can see if we should be bringing him back in for week 21 or late week 20, if any relevancy there. DeAndre Hunter back in for 26 minutes today. Uh, Jalen Johnson, only not the 19 minutes for Jalen Johnson today. Now, he has been an absolute superstar of lately, and I think he has just really put himself in contention to basically just shoot up your rankings next year. Like, who would have had him? His ankle went down. He only played those minutes today. He's a game-time decision moving forward. They've got a rest day. But he's pretty much cemented himself now as this talent that the eyes are going to be on. If you don't, it's going to be one of two Jalen's you get next year. Do you get Jalen Williams or you get Jalen Johnson? Because they profile very, very similar at times. High field goal percentage, good free throw percentage. They get rebounds. They get threes. They minimize your turnovers for the better part, and they get you the peripherals. So I think he's kind of played his way into now. He's played his way into now. A similar kind of consensus thought when we talk about these 3 and D guys and who he might want to target uh, moving in to the next season. Isaac Okoro today, their opponent was the Cleveland Cavaliers. They obviously lost out on this one. Darius Garden had to carry a lot of the offensive pressure today. I'm glad I benched him because he didn't give me any of the peripherals that I needed. Uh, Seven assists, love that from Darius. But look, it was the big horse himself, Jared Allen. Seven from 11 from the field, 19 rebounds, three assists. uh, And only one block shot for Jared that was leading the way there. Again, they're cobbling a team together with their injuries. Strucey is out. Uh, we know this. Um, Donovan Mitchell is out. This is the best that they've got. And the 36 minutes for Karis Levert really sends that message. 13 points from him. Uh, not way much else apart from the four turnovers we can take from the Cleveland Cavaliers going down to the Atlanta Hawks with DeJounte Murray, by the way, has stepped up so nicely there. And our second last game, because I'm going to come back to another game when I talk about waiver wire targets and where to go for the week ahead for this one here. Going to hit it on today that... The Washington Wizards continue to do my head in with 
not rolling Bilal Kulabali out there for like 34, 36 minutes a night. Now, maybe they don't want to, you know, hurt their young stud. I, I, I don't know. But if I can get seven less, 10 less Rashawn home minutes, like, yeah, 12 points for him is great. Two steals is nice. Two assists, five rebounds. Two for, This is a great 25 minutes from Rashawn Holmes, but we don't bank on that. You know, they go in this lineup where Bilal Kulabale is basically playing the glorified center role, nothing from deep, four rebounds, a steal and a block is really nice. But I want him to go out there and to just really commit to this the whole way. And I hope they do. With Bagley being out, I think this might be the chance. Uh, Jordan Bull-Pool, though, he continues to cook off the bench. For anyone who dropped him, must be looking back now to be like, ah, oh, fuck. Every single time that they see the Jordan Pool is just putting up absolutely huge minutes. The Oh, by the way, the choo-choo train has fully left on Corey Kispert. He now continues to be hopeless and not be able to rediscover the, the form that had him earlier today. But I've got to say this. This is an absolutely – there are some hot, hot, hot guys, and let's talk about them this hot, way for a hot, second. Hot, 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 hot. The Chicago Bulls and the Utah Jazz. Now, the Jazz have not had Larry Markin for the last couple of games. Uh, Keontae George was out in this one. Uh, Colin Sexton, again, decent. I would have liked some more peripherals for Colin. That would be nice. Five from five threes is, is very, very nice, though. He's having an absolutely great one. But what I like to see is, is John Collins is playing really good. That's really interesting to me. 25 points today, 13 rebounds, one steal, two blocks. He has been really good. He has been the Lowry marketing without Lowry being in town. But the guy that I really want to pay homage to, and I think that we all need to put onto our radars, is Bryce Sensabar. Now, Bryce Sensabar has every opportunity in the world with this team currently. If Larry Markin is going to continue to miss time, if Walker Kessler is going to continue to miss time. We know that Taylor Hendricks is out for the next week. The guy played 30 minutes today, five from eight, perfect from the free throw line, 12 rebounds. The, the one assist, okay, some passing out of your young blokes, not that common, tricky, but no peripheral stats. But the 30 minutes is nice. And I'm looking at this like, is this something? And, and I think it could be. He is probably the first guy in a little while I've been like, oh, Okay, what are you doing there? If you're going to run that Juzang for 20 minutes, you got nothing else left to lose. Now, this all changes very, very soon. Now, we know that they rolled out Walker Kessler all the way down the stretch last year, and we know that they pulled out and they pulled up stumps on Lowry with his quadriceps contusion or quadriceps injury currently. But last year, when it was injury, he missed like the last 10. What does Utah do here? Like, they're not going to push for the in season, they're six games behind the Lakers, or well, five and a half after today. They only lost by two points. They're still five and a half. I don't know what to make of it, but right now I'm just thinking that they will continue to roll out Senzabar. And when you can, when there are back-to-backs, I absolutely think that he is a must-add. And talking about must-ads, well, add this one. It is the Insight Unlimited. You can get your NRL, AFL, NBA, NBL, and BBL all for the course of the year for only $25 for a subscription to this one. It's huge. Get expert analysis, trade advice, pick your team, do everything you need and more, all for 25 Australian bucks. It's not even in the US. If you're listening to this in Europe, it's like $4. It's like the cost of like a pastry in euros, which is so cheap. You're basically giving up a pastry to possibly help you win hundreds. You should absolutely do that. And let's talk about waiver ads and targets. Targets acquired. Now, when we talk about targets acquired and our waiver guys, we want to look at the schedule because we do have the back end of the week upon us. We are heading to Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And we go for Thursday at seven, Friday at eight, Saturday for seven, and Sunday for nine games. Now, that is a little bit of a run here, and so we have to have a look at the back-to-backs to see what we can juice it. Now, again, it is harder to juice those back-to-backs on Friday, make sure you have a spot, or from Friday to Saturday. If you have a spot for Thursday and Friday, and again, you probably do with seven games about to be upon us for the day, we're on the back end for the Bulls, Warriors, and Kings. They're on the back end of their one. So you might have one of these guys, and you might choose to keep them. So if that's the case, you look to your Friday and Saturday double. 
which is the Hornets and the Trailblazers. We want to keep these guys there for that one. But if we have nothing else to do, if we have an ad to make right now, we're looking for the Heat and the T-Wolves. The Heat and the T-Wolves are really interesting for a few guys. We know that Carl Anthony Towns is out for our next one. So Nas Reed becomes a play instantly if he is available in your leagues. Grab him in for the first one. He may be some relevance value on the back end of the second one. Or if Cat doesn't return or is a little bit sore on his return, we've seen that happen before. And they just ease him back into game action and Nas gets out there. They're flying. They don't need to play Cat all the time. So they're a lock for that one. With the Miami Heat, Caleb Martin and Jome Hakez Jr. are absolutely the homie. And Caleb, don't do Cody. He's injured and he's a Charlotte Hornet. That's that's something that you don't want to do. You want to grab Caleb Martin or the homie Hakez Jr. Patty Mills, although with the Miami Heat, probably yet to enter any form of fantasy relevance. He'll be a late shooting stream target if and when he becomes available. And if we're talking about long-term here as well, we know that the Cavs are off their back-to-back set. They do have another one coming later in the week, but for Saturday and Sunday, we have the Nets and the Clippers here. So the Nets are absolutely rife with guys with Dorian Finney-Smith. Cam uh, Cam With Cam Johnson being out uh, with his ankle injury, who are we looking for? Cam Thomas, he was dropped. He's been out. So he'd come back in. Lonnie Walker, has also been getting minutes for these guys as Dennis Smith Jr. as well. They seem to be the key targets for the rest of our weekend. And that's kind of where I'm placing my stock. I know I picked up Caleb Martin in one league. I needed a guard and forward eligibility. So he had that. So I pulled him in for my next two because I had the best of both worlds slots available for Thursday and for Friday. That was one ad that I could get for two. And that's how we want to kind of play it off the back-to-back. So if anything, we're kind of looking to probably grab in like a Caleb Martin for Thursday and Friday. And then we want to hit up one of those Clippers or the Nets guys with the Clips. I absolutely love a juicy Norm Powell ad if he's available. He will be an absolute elite option for three-pointers. He's always going to chip these off the bench for this uh, for the Los Angeles Clippers. And then Sunday to Monday, we are looking at getting back onto the Cavs. Obviously, we know right now that with Don and Max Struess being out, Isaac Okoro has become an absolutely must-add, and he has been a very decent three-point shooter this year, much improved. So that's what we're looking for for the rest of week uh, week nine. We've got a bunch of games. Let's tap into our lineups, look at the best available guys tomorrow, add those in here, going through the Yahoo list right now to see who are our most added transaction trends. Let's have a look at our transaction trends. And number one right there is Kayla Martin, followed by Duncan Robinson in some leagues for Miami Heat. Duncan Robinson is less owned. Uh, he is at 45% rostered. He is an absolute bring in right now as well. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, because again, the Nets are the other option that actually have three games in the coming four days. They've played two. They had a five-game week this week. Absolutely huge for the Nets. So Lonnie Walker automatically gets a huge start. He's been great. 19 and 13, not a lot of way of other things. A cheeky steal in here, a cheeky assist because he knows how to pass the ball, obviously being a basketball player. But the plus 500 from the floor has been very nice for him. So you can kind of pull in three games of the stream here. The Trailblazers do up breathe. Again, we're looking to pull him into our teams. He has been a nice source of field goal percentage for the best part, points, rebounds, steals, and blocks. He's contributing those peripherals every single chance that he gets. And in the Pistons, I don't know why Fontecchio has been one of the most added guys, especially without a back-to-back ad. Now, there is a little bit of juice to him. They've got a couple games left this week. But Simon Fontecchio has been doing well. So has Asar Thompson in the newly reformed Detroit Pistons lineup ever since they shipped off all their blokes. He can continue to absolutely cook for you. He's been getting threes and buckets, rebounds, assists, and steals. He has been averaging at least a steal a game for the past seven games. So here's a nice little stream option. And again, if the Pistons had a back-to-back, I would be absolutely singing his praises. But maybe he's good enough for you for the one. We bring him in and we dump him. Or maybe you could look at a different play. Okay, fine. I will bring in one Simon Fontecchio for the single game, and then I'm going to roll into the back-to-back. So this is where we can look to that as the option. Okay, cool. I've got nothing going on Thursday. There's no heat guy I want. Duncan Robinson's taken. I'm going to bring in Fontecchio, and then I'm going to jump into the Hornets like my guy Micic. He has been on absolute fire lately. He has been... He has been incredible. 14 games and two steals in each of the last five games. He in the last of the last three, sorry. 
He has been an absolute stud, and he is only currently 13% rostered. So maybe I do a Fontecchio and a Roland Tormicic. Maybe. Maybe looking at a Grant Williams ad. So this is where we're kind of pinning down for the next 48 hours where we want to go. Do you need to make the decision? Do I add one and one? Or do I add one for two and then a single? How do you want to play it? I think there's probably more merit right now with the way that the schedule plans out is just make your Thursday ad and then you can pin your Friday and Saturday. I'm personally a big fan of the single Thursday, roll into the back-to-back for the Friday, Saturday. And then if I can pick up an Isaac Okoro for my Sunday into my Monday, because that helps out my week 20. And that helps me lock that in and chase down my week 19 victory and get me sorted for week 20. That's all from me. Make sure you like and subscribe to all things insight. Everyone take care. We'll see you soon.